This is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean David. Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. You know what time it is. It is old school NBA time. So today's episode, I'm going to take a look at NBA legends, giving their opinion on how good Sir Charles Barkley was. It was pretty hard to find some of the clips, but hey, what about a new challenge? So you guys sit back, buckle up, and let's get right into it. Now the first clip is from the Dan Patrick Show, a very good show with many NBA legends, so if you don't know the show, check it out. And the clip is with Reggie Miller. Let's hear what he has to say. And especially in that way, I mean, you were part of one of the most dominant eras of basketball. Let me bring in Reggie. Reggie, where do you stand on that? Wow, that that is that's very difficult because if you're going to embody the totality of both careers because now you can put in Charles's post careers. Let's not forget he's won a couple Emmys yeah. as well. So the, to me, those are his championships. Those yeah. are those are like the six rings Scotty has. Um, and you're right, Charles is beloved worldwide. Not to say that Scotty is not, but Scotty is loved worldwide because he played with Michael Jordan and he has six championship rings. Yeah. Charles is beloved not only what he did on the court because he was one of the handful of top power forwards and players of his time but because of what he does on a nightly basis on TV and what he says and on top of this because people don't talk about this with Charles his generosity so you make the press conference and the next chapter of your life starts you go to the Sixers and you get paired with Chuck Charles Barkley talk a little bit about what it meant playing with him, scoring side by side with him. I mean, you guys were kind of the one-two punch there on a, on a pretty solid team for those of you that don't remember. Talk a little bit about that if you could. Yeah, Charles was interesting. You know, uh, you know, a, a really a dear friend of mine still today. You know, Charles was, a, was, the, was the kind of player that, you know, he, he just exude confidence you know he knew he was a good player and and he demonstrated that every night Barkley was a dominant player uh extremely dominant in in the post area he was one of the best the most talented players that's ever played the game of basketball in this history charles had this you know magnetism about him and uh, he was very confident who wouldn't want to play with a guy like charles he wasn't going to lose I mean, he would take everybody on his back and say, I'm going to get you the promised land. Barkley is Barkley. I don't think he's 6'3". He was just one of those rare players that size didn't matter. It was just determination. Rebound, Barkley. He battles, he shoots, he scores. Sir Charles. I mean, he would take on Goliath. I mean, he was just had that bravado about him. So Charles... Uh, he was unbelievable what he accomplished for his size. Charles Barkley is probably one of the greatest power forwards of all time, for sure. Uh, because of his skill set, uh, he was still able to dominate inside the paint. His rebounding is, is second to none. I mean, this guy was just a beast on the boards. To be only 6'7 or so and be able to snag 20 rebounds, and you know, on a nightly basis seemed like it was incredible. Charles was, was a different kind of competitor. He wanted to destroy you. I mean, he was... He was a fun guy, and he's super off the floor, a great guy to be around, but such a competitor on the floor, and, and there was nothing that he couldn't do on the basketball court. Here's the lob for Barkley, goes up and jams! Oh, beautiful alley-oop for Sir Charles! He could get on a roll when the team's down, and he can create a 10-0 run by himself. And we knew we had a superstar. And not only a superstar, we had a person who could sway the officials one way or the other, by his aggressiveness, by his physicality, and, and that was unheard of besides Carl Malone in the Western Conference. He was so genuine, he'd give you the shirt off his back, uh, great teammate. 
cared about winning more than anybody I've ever played with as far as when the game started. Hated to practice. Was the worst practice player in the world. He was the best basketball player I'd ever played with. And I'm saying he's the best basketball player ever, but the one I played with, he was the best basketball player I'd ever played with. And I would have to really think long and hard to think of any player that played an entire season that year or any other year with more determination to win than Charles Barkley. Barkley dish off to Sabanos, back to Barkley and a nice give and go. Barkley goes in for the chain. He'd always believed in himself, but I, I think that for him to win the MVP over Michael Jordan is something that legitimized his career in a way that uh, probably more so than anything else. And he was that good. I mean, he was good enough to win an MVP over Michael Jordan. And he was good enough to outplay probably the greatest power forward of all time, Karl Malone, uh, whenever they played against each other that year. Next, we're going to take a look at, at a clip from NBA Open Court. So if you watch that show on a regular basis, then you know that I'm a huge fan of Open Court. Let's have a look what some of the greatest legends have to say about Sir Charles. And we welcome you back to Open Court. We've been talking this entire show about the best teams to never win a title. Now we're going to just talk individuals. And this is uh, it's kind of tough. This is like when you're watching golf and it's like, hey, the best player to never win a major and that kind of thing. But, but this is, we're not talking current players now. Mm -hmm. We're talking players who have uh, retired. Ooh. And I don't know if you can narrow it down to one. And I'm, I'm thinking if you had to do a starting five, players who never mm. won a championship, Jeez. if I were to throw at you this starting five. It's got to be positioned? Yeah. I yeah. Don't care. This ooh. would be my position. Ooh. A, a, ba a backcourt of Stockton and Iverson. Ooh, forwards, hey. forwards of Barkley and Malone and Patrick Ewing in the middle. Your reaction would be? That's my five. <laughs> no hesitation. No. Malone, mm -hmm. Barkley, Neek, Neek, Ewing. Ewing. Yeah, that's, that's the five. five. That's yeah. my five. Yeah. No, I, I would, is, no, Barkley. No, no, no. Because no, if it you, was not for Barkley, Malone, those guys, I wouldn't even be here. And I look at it like Patrick Ewing. I wanted him to get one Barkley. I'm talking Malone. in the conversation. So. Not one guy. If you had to take one, eliminate everybody. So it's he's the number up. one guy. Ewing. David got one. Every center got one but Pat. It's, it's Ewing, Ewing, Ewing over Charles. Charles is two. Pat, no, then Charles. I would go Ewing, uh, Ewing had not. better teams. Yeah. yeah. Ewing's team swept Charles' teams when he was in Philly. Yeah, yeah. The, the early Ewing teams would beat. Kenny, would you go Chuck Charles or Neek? You said Chuck two, Neek. And then Neek three. What was it like, truthfully, playing against Charles Barkley? The one moment that I can pick with Charles, uh, we were playing Philly in the playoffs. And I guess I got into a hot rhythm and I had about 40 some points and Charles was yelling, I can hear him yelling in the huddle, so I'm like, who gonna guard this guy? Somebody's gotta guard this guy. That's all right, I guard this guy. So <laughs> I go and then we playing and, and we got into a switch and Charles jumps out and guards me. And yeah, I never known Charles as a, as a defensive <laughs> stopper. So the first thing he does, he breaks down in this defensive position, with hands up, all, everything looks technically technically right. And I just laughed. I say, when the hell are you going to start playing defense? <laughs> and who taught you how to get in a defensive stance? And I had to pass it. But that's the type of guy he would take on a challenge, even though even though he was not up to the challenge. He didn't care. And that's just him. Draymond would be a little tougher than most, but Draymond couldn't guard Barkley. Nobody really could guard Barkley one-on-one. -on -one. He couldn't just handle the ball and shoot the ball. He was incredibly powerful. And back in the day, if, if, if there's a case to be made about Draymond, is that back in the day, you could get away with being more physical than you can right now. So you could hack a guy a little bit, you could slap him up a little bit, and that might have an effect. Against most players, that would work. Against Barkley, the round mound and rebound, as powerful as he was, that would not have worked. Um, he would not have been able to, uh, Draymond would not have been able to guard Barkley. Barkley would have averaged 25 against him just like he did against anybody else. So the next clip is straight from the 1990s. It involves Scottie Pippen and Sir Charles Barkley. And it was about, well, Scottie Pippen joining Charles and not being so pleased with Charles' attitude. Let's have a look. I wanted to get Charles Barkley an apology at gunpoint. So he could never expect an apology from me. If anything, he owed me an apology for coming and play with his sorry pet butt. Scotty gets his wish. He's a very selfish guy. Uh, he doesn't show me the desire to want to win. And uh, that's my reason for wanting to get away from 
playing with, with, with him anymore because he don't show the dedication. And uh, I probably should have listened to Michael a year ago when he said that Charles never will win a championship because he doesn't show any dedication. All right, you guys, that was it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the content. Please leave a like and also subscribe to the channel. And I guess I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine. You all be healthy. Take care and goodbye.